I was uh, randomly reminiscing over a uh, class that I took uh, like a year and a half ago. And it was about, it, the class was um, gender and communication. And it was basically, it was a really nice course. It was, a, you know, a course where, you know, we talked about, you know, gender dynamics, feminism, male move, male rights movements, um, and so forth. Uh, I, I wish that, you know, I was I was always a kind of an out there kind of thinker because uh, I remember I had we I had wrote an article I'm not an article an extra, I did an extra credit paper and boy I used to write like hell on those papers Jesus um, and it was, my t- the topic that I gave myself was a response to. Uh, a little seminar that we had where it, it was like a round table where like the um the feminist professors came in and you know they led discussions on feminism equal rights such and such and I, I didn't even say anything and the reason why i didn't say anything during during the session was because i'm used to hearing myself talk i'm, I'm I, I always hear my ideas i know how i think and like sometimes i want to just be in this in a in a in a circle to where in a forum where like people's responses are not or on their own they feel comfortable they're not trying to like twist the words or kind of bait me to agree with them by you know you know i, I just let them i let people kind of be themselves and sometimes you know like my friends they kind of be like dang you like you should have said that you should have brought it up and i was like you know nah i just wanted to like let people i just want to hear people's own thoughts and opinion because i'm so used to mine and you know if i debated them you know i don't want to make them look foolish or whatever and you know i i i, I get in there but anyways uh i, I wrote this response paper uh, on why black women really they don't need feminism and I, I did good on the paper, and I had I had touched on some points that a lot of my uh, you know gender, uh, you know gender or feminist professors tend to bring up, such as you know stay at home dads and that, you know there's no shame in that. But I, I I made a response in saying that you know that you know when it comes to stay at home being a stay at home father, you know these these white families. Uh, I hope that's not a crack. Okay, nope. You know, these white families are already in the suburbs. You know, they're already living good. And, um, I, and it was, I can't find the video, but I remember I was watching, like, um, like NBC, and they had did a special on stay at home dads. And, like, the, the dudes were, like, retired. They're, like, young retirees. Like, the dudes retiring at, like, late 30s, early 40s, and, like, one dude was, like, a, a freaking editor for Disney. And I was, like, looking at all these, like, these dudes have, like, the dream career. Like, they can, of course, they can be stay-at-home dads. They already did everything. You know, so, you know, they, they put in the work from, you know, you know, senior year of high school to you know, climbing the corporate ladder and it's like, you know, they enjoy the view and it's like, hey, you know, I just want to, you know, be with my son. Let's, let, I want to raise him. I want to be there. I don't want to be that neglectful, you know, uh, father who was so uptight about his job that, you know, he forgot about his son. And you tend to see this with a lot of uh, white movies with father and son relationships, you see that in the Lego movie, um, you know, um, the boy who's imagining the Lego world, you know, his dad is this um, tight one, you know, everything has to be particular, you don't mix and match, you know, you, you go by the book, you go by the instructions, you see the same thing with Elf. Uh, which ironically, Will Ferrell is in the opposite position, and he's, you know, he's the boy, and you know, he's teaching his dad how to have fun and enjoy Christmas, and you know, his dad is this tightwad, who you know, live, you know, corporate life. He doesn't have fun, and you know, he has to bring it out of him. You know, 
Uh, you know, same thing like even with Star Wars, you know, uh, Luke Skywalker, you know, you know, um, you know, once he learned that Darth Vader was his, Darth Vader was his dad, you know, you know, Darth Vader was like, you know, um, hey, um, we can rule the galaxy father and son. But it's like, you know, nah, I, I don't want to do that. What you forget business. I just want to love you. I want to, you know. You you kind of get kind of get like sentimental with just like you know the sons just want love they just want you know a father and son relationship rather than just you know being a corporate slave you know that you tend to see that theme a lot in in in, in these movies. Um, I also you know I brought it up that you know for white people it's it's easy for them to experiment with the gender roles because they're already in the suburbs you know you know. Uh, Keisha and uh, Todrick, they can't do it. They can't, you know, Todrick, you know, can't stay at home and say, yeah, I'm going to be the uh, progressive black father and, um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to be the, uh, the ideal, we're going to be the ideal millennial relationship. And it's like, you know, dude, it's not going to work that way. It's not going to work you being at home because a lot of sisters, have already seen black men stay at home doing nothing, playing Xbox. You know, like, like, what are you doing that requires so much time for you to be at home? Other than, you know, you say the kids, but I'm like, damn, there's daycares. I mean, you, 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 like, you're just going to be, you know, wearing an apron, just playing with the kids, and, you know, like, what? <laughs> You know, you're almost like no different than these estranged state, these estranged, you know, live-in boyfriends, who who do the same damn thing. You know, you're not putting a a a good face into this whole progressivism, even though j just because you identify as a feminist or you know you just want to be different, you know. Um. <laughs> You know, and I, I was, I, when I was writing my paper, you know, I, I was just kind of contradicting that, you know, I was just kind of contradicting the ideas and that, you know, saying that, hey, you know, black women are kind of confused because they want to progress, but they still have, you know, I would say like a loyalty or, you know, just ca this, you know, they're still cheerleading, you know, black men on to do better. You know, they, they, they want black men to beat the white man in, you know, with certain fields other than the, the sports and, you know, music and all that shit. They want to see, you know, black men, you know, dominating in fields that you won't even think black men would be into. It's, you know... <laughs> You know, and you know, in the side note, I, I, in my opinion, a, a lot of you know black women are, are are tired. You know, they they, you know, they don't want to be the rock in the pillar of the community anymore. And it's not because you know they have any. You know, some might have vitriol for for you know black men or black people in general, but you know, I think if you know black women had the luxury to be a stay at home mom or just like not work seriously like they they just like do like a part-time job at the mall and it's like oh well this this job is just for like my personal expenses like my husband he handles the bills you know if, if black women could be in that situation they would it kind of like reminds me of like a, and this this is always stuck in my head like there was like an episode of Everybody Hate Chris, and I forget what episode it was on. It was about, but or what led to it. But it was there was this kind of imaginary scene where Rochelle envisions her lifestyle as like this bawling uh, millionaire. Like she's like they're all like the whole family is in like all white. They're on like a float. Oh. It was something I can't remember. I hope I I might use if I can find it. I will use it as the thumbnail if I can remember. But you know, Julius, he seems like he's like a, a in the Marines or something. You see him in his, you know, 
you know, uh, formal, uh, you know, military, uh, you know, attire. You know, I wouldn't, I don't know, I guess his officer attire or whatever, you know, and, you know, Rochelle is just looking pampered. And, you know, black women, in my opinion, would love to be in those positions to wear their, and I, I think that's why a lot of, you know, women or a lot of black women are venturing off into into areas where they just want to be recognized for their beauty. You know, it could be Instagram. And it's like, you know, you can't really knock it that off. You know, you can't really knock it because, you know, they just, you know, they, they don't have really a big interest in, you know, doing the hard work, you know, of building the community or maintaining it or whatever. You know, it, it's it's not fun you know, killing yourself over, like, hours of, you know, de- of a dead-end job and overtime and, you know, not getting paid, you know, it, you know, it, it's just not that motivating anymore, um, and, you know, I, I think I wrote this in the paper, I can't remember, but I'd rather be that chauvinistic pig than, you know, be the broke black guy. Because the thing is, like, imagine this situation, okay? I'm at Red Lobster. And, okay, I have a wife, one son, one daughter. Okay, and we go we go there. And, you know, the, the waitress gives, you know, passes me the check. Like, she... But let's just say, like, she's so used to, you know, black people doing weird things with the chat that she just kind of puts it in the middle. Like, she doesn't know who's paying, so she just puts it in the middle. And, you know, she's looking at, you know, me and my wife, and she's like, you know, who's, you know, she doesn't want to say who's paying, but she just slaps it in the middle just so, you know, it's like an equal amount of reach. And, you know, and, you know, and let's say, you know, my wife passes it to me, you know, and I'm like, okay, grab to my wallet. Um, here's the hundred dollar bill. The the change is your tip. And then, you know, you know, let's say, you know, a feminist sees that and, you know, she's like, you know, why didn't you let your wife pay? And it's like, I, I have, you know, the reason why I didn't and, you know, uh, like, 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 okay, let's say this, okay, she's, okay, let's say a feminist, like, sees me, okay, I pay, and she also sees me in my car, and she's like, why, why did you, why didn't you let your wife pay, and why didn't you let her, you know, drive in the driver's seat of the car, isn't it the, a family car, and, okay, let's just say this, okay, I, you know, I would respond like, hey, you know, the reason I paid is because, um, you know, this is on me, you know, this was my idea, I wanted to go here, and if you want to do something, if you want to go somewhere, uh, you know, pay the cost to be the boss, hey, if I want to go here, uh, I'm, I'm paying, you know, that's just out of courtesy, you know, and also, it's like, hey, you know, I have, you know, a daughter, and, you know, I want to, you know, put a, a good image or a good impression that, hey, you know, um, you know, that, you know, you need to be with men that can provide and, you know, do this because, you know, you, you need to live for your enjoyment. You know, I don't want you struggling with some dude and y'all are breaking the, tr- the check in some equal, uh, like crazy fraction ways and, and stuff like that. Like, you know, that's not fun. And, hey, you know, I got a son. And, hey, you know, I have to look at it like, hey, you know, he needs to, you know, you know, understand how much it costs to be, to raise a family. You know, so I'm not, so he better not be pregnant. He better not be getting a girl pregnant at the age of 16 because I'm like, you you do know how much groceries cost. You know, he, here's the receipts of the, of two weeks of groceries, you know, and, you know, he's looking at, like, dang, do do we eat all that, you know, it's like, yeah, okay, and you you think your little job at the mall is going to pay for all this, you know, your mall job is only paying for, like, snacks, you know, 
You know, I have to think long haul. I have to think about not just about today, tomorrow. I have to think about next week. And, you know, hopefully some food I will save up for until next month. Hell, I, I have to think about emergencies as well. You know, what if something happens and, you know, we don't have access to a fridge or power? You know, what what do we do then? So, you know, I have to, you know, do that stuff. And, hey, there's boys and children and girls or whatever right beside us. Hey, I need to put this image into these you know, impressionable minds that, hey, you know, b- black men can ca- cater to their family. You know, black men aren't struggling. We're not broke. And, you know, hell, even if I'm the exception to the rule, I just want to say, hey, you know, guys like me exist. <laughs> you know, and when it comes to, you know, me being in the driver's seat, I'm like, hey, you know, um... You know, that's just how I was raised. You know, if, you know, you drive the lady to where she wants to go or, you know, or where I go. Or like, hey, it's my idea. I, you know, it's on me or whatever. You know? <laughs> you know, even though it's the family car, it's like, hey, you know, you know, my money was, was put into that car. You know? <laughs> you know, I have to be patriarchal because... I have to be mindful of what other people see. You know, and that's the thing with black folks. We get into this debate, this this debacle over you shouldn't care what people think of you. And, you know, it's somewhat right, somewhat. But, you know, you have to be mindful of the impressions that you give, even if it wasn't intentional. Hey, me, um... Walking down the street, uh, you know, may seem innocent to me, but hey, there could be, uh, you know, a, a, somebody down the street watching me, and she's like, um, you know, and she sees how I posture myself, how elegant I talk, and she's like, oh, you know, you know black boys are educated. Uh, you know, I need to stop thinking that all we can talk talking ebonics or you know they don't have good vocabulary i just met this gentleman you know you know you know who's doing great things for his community or whatever um you know you know it's it's all about impressions because the things that black men do or do not do people are watching and this is where you get all these crazy videos from black women talking about all the things they've witnessed. You know, people are watching, you know, from, you know, the black man walking around, you know, the black community with his white girl parading her around. You know, people are watching. You know, people are going to be generalizing. That's going to be, I don't want to be the face of, you know, of why somebody thinks low of black men. I, I don't want to be that. You know, I, even if it's something that's not, uh, you know, cynical or whatever, I just don't want to be a part of that equation. I don't want to be part of that, you know, and, you know, let's say LaQuisha, you know, sees me in the, at the mall. Even though she doesn't know me, she sees me, you know, you know, asking my girl to pay for my meal. And she would be like, and, you know, I was at the mall, you know, she could be on Facebook. And I was at the mall, and I see all these niggas expecting their girl to pay for their, for their date. That's bullshit. You know, I'm like, yeah, that is, I, you know, real talk for me. Yeah, that would be bullshit. So, you know, I have to be careful with that. You know, I don't want to be in the subordinate position because because there is no black progressivism through feminism. You know, you know, I, there isn't none. You know, expecting and you know, women will like feminists will be like, you know, well, you're you're being progressive. You, you you're doing more good than you think. But I'm like, no, because you know, you don't even have. Your feminism doesn't even have a good reach with black women. So I can talk the mumbo jumbo of what Bell Hooks thinks of black men with no jobs as these, you know, she envisions, she sees them as these, you know, 
fuck the system, you know, pro-black men. And I'm like, Tyrone, who can't, who refuses to get a job, is not on no pro-black shit. He's not a feminist. You know, he's not doing it out of um, not wanting to work for the white man. No, he's he's doing it because he knows women will pamper him and do X, Y, and Z. <laughs> and then, you know, some feminists will rewrite the rules and then she will be angry about why over, um, you know, why black men are broke. You know, so... You know, you know, I, I'd rather just be hit with the, you know, patriarchal pig, chauvinistic pig, you know, than, than, you know, just being called broke, you know, because our, in, because our absence or inactivity translates to failure to your eyes, to the, to the eyes of black women. So, you know, there is, there is no 50-50, there is no, um, you know, you know, she puts in her work, I do mine, there, there's none of that. And so, black women really don't need feminism because their complaints are about patriarchy and about what's not being done. And, you know, women, you know, black women aren't comparing themselves on the privileges white feminists have. They're comparing what black men don't have to, you know, to what white men do have. That's the equalizer. That's what they're trying to equalize, you know. Or at least them equaling themselves to a, a patriarchy, a white patriarchy. You know, or, you know, earning enough, you know, earning money or leading an income. And, you know, even with that, even with, you know, black women's campaign to get equal pay or at least more pay, you know, um, it wouldn't be respected for a black man to make significantly less unless this is some uber feminist who's trying to justify, you know, her relationship that yeah being with this burger king uh you no know, manager you know is the archetype black power couple and i'm like no it's not <laughs> but you know that, that's my video i ain't got i ain't got much to say on this topic